Hi, I'm Vitold, and this is going to be a hard call because the previous S-Class was an amazing car. Really, it was, it was fantastic. It set the, the highest standard in the class. Really, the only thing that they actually did screw up was then making other models look very much like it. But actually, this is only if you do care about this. So now, after seven years, they had to do something. Well, so they did something, and except for doing that something, they added some tech. And that tech will blow your mind, just like it blew mine. So come join me here and let's see what actually they did to this S-Class because, oh man, that's, that's a lot of stuff. So first of all, they've made a new key. And since S-Class is often bought by old people, now they made it shiny, especially on this side, so that when it drops, it's easier to find. So I really like how they thought about making life easier. This is, this is really impressive. Now, those of you who watched my CLA class in the video knew that I was complaining a lot about USB-C only charging spots. So Mercedes addressed that. Now, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight USB charging slots. But other than that, well, look at that. Two USB-Cs, two USB-Cs, nothing else to really charge my phone <laughs> again. I don't know what's their problem with USB. Normal, Mercedes behaving like Apple. Adapters everywhere. Now this car can jump, and I mean literally, it's jumping a few centimeters when it expects a side crash to have another car hit a larger part of its lower and stronger structure. This is a part of e-active body control air suspension, which also uses other cameras and sensors to monitor what surface the car will drive on and adapts every wheel individually to those conditions. So if regular air suspension is not enough for you, then go ahead and get yourself this one. It should be among the best in the world in terms of comfort of driving. This new S-Class is slightly bigger than the previous one. It's now 5 meters 18 centimeters long versus 5 meters 12 centimeters long previously. And it's now 1 meter 95 centimeters wide versus 1 meter 90 centimeters wide previously. Technically, you may also be able to get out of the car on a dedicated parking lot with proper infrastructure and tell the car to go find a parking spot and just park for itself. It needs certain parking lot infrastructure, so it may take a while for us to be able to start using this every day. But it tells me that the car is pretty intelligent. Now, four-wheel steering makes a huge difference in terms of how the car moves. Those rear wheels can stick out so much this way or that way that the car starts looking like a frog. It is said that this reduces the turning circle by two meters. So in the end, the S-Class turns around just like an A-Class. Crazy. Up to 10 degrees angle, which is very much and at the same time more than any other production car today. In some cases, this may mean that you may park forward in a perpendicular way at once without the need of reversing. And that's at low speeds. Yet at high speeds, the wheels turn in the same direction so that the car shifts and moves, switches lanes in a way like a some bloody robot or something. This actually gives it a lot more stability. So there is less body lean and more composure. So in the end, it behaves like a giant mechanical spider, if you will. There are front digital LED lights, and that's not a joke. There are three main LED units, and the car can display you symbols on the road. It can blink at pedestrians with marker lights. It can show you how to position yourself on a lane when the roadworks are present, and it can do other cool things. The lights will also warn you if there is a stop sign, if the light turns red in front of you, or if you may be at risk of entering a one-way road from the wrong side. You know, S-Class owners may be in fact elderly millionaires and they may indeed need all this assistance. I've heard that this is a stick included to help you get out of the car. But seriously, all those functions are possible thanks to over one million tiny elements inside every lamp. Some say they are mirrors, some say it's about pixels. Nobody really knows in the end according to my research. But what matters is that it is a millionaire's car. So the car basically communicates with you using its front lights. And the anti-dazzle function blocks out the light stream in spots where other cars are so that you can keep using your high beam while there are vehicles in front of you still. This is amazing and literally worth every penny. Now inside there is this ambient lighting and this is something that I really like. Now, these lights actually do react to what you are doing. If I'm changing temperature, if I'm trying to raise temperature, it will blink to the color that corresponds with 
peat, which is red, beautiful. Take a look at that. <laughs> okay, if I do it a few times, actually it's sending a few of these. <laughs> that is cool. Now I'm going to make it colder. It's blue, so just the blue is coming. And the same thing actually happens when it senses something in your blind spot. So not only do you get the LED light there in the mirror, but you also get a warning here in case you are trying to actually change the lane. And actually these are not just regular LED stripes because the thing is that ha yeah I can I can show you that the thing is that they actually can change colors in different places so it's not one stripe because they are not able to do that this has to be some kind of a display actually they are very big and behind very nice glass kind of thing so wow this is something next level there is a lot going on inside the car and the feeling is very very nice but especially thanks to those new seats i just perhaps should not call it elegant inside and that's because there is so much digital stuff going on inside that it can be sometimes too much i think it may be overwhelming to some of us i actually do like it just the question that pops up in my head is that whether this is what actually brings the name of an S-Class in my mind. S-Class has always been, to me, a synonym to elegance. And there is a little bit of controversy here. However, this controversy is definitely, definitely impressive. I love beautifully made and shaped things. And except for the steering wheel and seats, there is maybe these USB slots, maybe, maybe they could be something that would be really nice and very enjoyable to touch because otherwise, because of the screens being here and not many buttons being here, these are also touch, kind of touch pads. Look, they, see I can just by doing that, same here, what can I do? I can go down. So just by doing that, I don't need to press anything. There are no real buttons anymore oh, on the door to turn the car on and off and those paddle shifters here. These are the only things. Look, some manufacturers install those crystal gear levers, gear selectors rather. Now Mer Mercedes gives you this plastic, cheap, really cheap. This is really not good. Those cheap levers here, uh, that's, not an S-Class like, <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's not. Also, I've got my iPhone to play with if I want to make myself familiar with how glass feels. I don't need all those screens here and touch pads, touch switches, touch buttons, whatever they are. Anyway, you can really feel that it's luxurious and comfortable here. This is no joke. The feeling, this is an S-Class feeling. No doubt about this. You can feel that there is luxury and comfort here. So if you are into that, this car is definitely for you. The design here in the back is really cool too. Inside there, there can be a cooler for your drinks or whatever you might want to hide. Now, in what you saw in this here, even without those things, reminds me very much of a luxurious yacht, even though I've never been on any. And now the best invention ever, ambient lighting around the seatbelt buckle. It works great if you're blind or you often carry drunk passengers. During the pandemic, some of us can't party in the clubs. So now here is your full service private club. Perfect car for the time of its introduction in 2020 and 2021. Great. Mercedes gives you two iPads here. And this is a buy one S class, get two free iPads kind of a deal. I'd say it's tempting. This main iPad is 12.8 inches and has an OLED screen. This is Tesla style. And the thing is that that one is 17 inches though. Come on, Mercedes, how could you lose this one? Well, there's no handy touch, but our scroll wheel available because of all this. So now we lose one comfortable way of controlling the system. And I must say that I do actually prefer the controller wheels more than the one big screen that I have to focus to touch in the right spot. Controversial decision. This spot right here is empty anyway, and this plastic will get scratched like crazy. Look at those marks. Good thing is that the screen reacts to touch by vibrating and gives you some feedback this way. So you know if you already pressed or not yet and need to try and I'm again and repeat the procedure a few times. It usually happens with those screens. So icons are definitely big enough in my opinion. That's a good point. There may be two, no three more additional iPads in the back. And if you're getting a long wheelbase car, at some point you may be unable to reach your main iPad and then this small iPad comes in handy and now you can use the big iPad using 
the smaller iPad. These are heated and cooled cup holders. This is great and I'm not exaggerating here at all. This is really, really nice to have. There were ones in the GLE Coupe too and they very effectively cool your phone down after talking to your wife while being driven back drunk from that closed nightclub. They basically moved the switches and buttons onto the steering wheel so that you don't have to share them with the passenger. Only the top level programmers are now able to learn all their functions. Awesome. There are still touch pads integrated into the steering wheel, left for the left screen in front of you and right for the right main multimedia screen. And some of the buttons are in some part touch sensitive too. There is augmented reality here thanks to the front camera. It shows you arrows and other signs in real time telling you where to go and what's waiting for you ahead in real time. It works both on your main multimedia system and on the windscreen with your head-up display. However, this camera is located in a weird spot. It's right here where it says, I'm here, look at me. It's like a snot hanging off of the car's nose. And there is a place for a jar, but not with any food, but with a fragrance that the car can spread all over the interior for you to kill any unpleasant smells that you or other passengers can create or bring in. Now, surprise, surprise, we've got engine downsizing even in an S-Class nowadays. There are mostly inline six-cylinder engines. Even the new S500 is an inline six-cylinder 3.0-liter engine instead of a V8. Now, it's 3.0. Well, maybe it's smooth, maybe it's enough, maybe it's so quiet that you will not regret not having a V8, but to me, it doesn't matter because I love a V8 and nothing else. Still good news is that there is a V8 and now we have to upgrade to S580 and then perhaps AMG version. The move is not bad by any means because there is a V8 if you want it. I just feel a little bit controversial because of calling a 3.0 liter an S500. I truly cannot wait for the AMG version, especially that I heard that with its exhaust pipes, it can suck inside little girls if it detects that they were not polite. I don't know if that's true, but if your children start disappearing, this may be the cause. There's the newest version of MBUX multimedia system integrated into this new iPad, tablet, digital screen. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM and I don't think we need to know anything else. However, you may communicate with the kind lady by saying, Hey Mercedes. How can I help? There she is. Always listening to you, so be careful and be polite. This lady actually knows which person, which passenger inside the car is talking to her. So that, for example, she can change the temperature only for that one single person. Now this is fancy and useful. Another thing is that since the lady has her eyes right there and she's looking you in the eyes all the time, she knows, for example, which mirror you want to set. So I'm looking at the left mirror. I'm just using one thing. I'm not choosing the mirror nut. But look at this. That one is moving. Yeah, I'm adjusting the left one. Now I'm not doing anything else. I just look at that mirror. Okay, now I'm looking at it. <laughs> and that one is moving. <laughs> oh, I flipped them back. All right, that was a mistake. <laughs> You're getting a few default themes to choose from depending on which one you like the most. And the whole digital appearance of the screens is changing then. But wait, wait, wait. Aside from voice control, there is also waving communication, which allows you to use certain gestures to have the car do certain things for you. Like for example, if you want to open your sunroof, you do something like that here and the car will do it for you. Autonomous driving includes, for example, lane keeping, blind spot information system, cross traffic warning in the back. In traffic, it can steer itself, it can stick to the lane and can also change lanes on its own. And of course, stopping and then getting back to moving in traffic is here too. And that's something that I really like in city driving. This is, in my opinion, one of the most useful features. You can also have two additional buttons on the steering wheel. My colleagues at Mercedes are very proud because now there will be two front airbags available. The thing is that they are for the passengers on the rear seats and you can get them in a long wheelbase S-Class. Now this is a world first. Also, there are side curtains, but that's a standard thing. What is non-standard here is that you can also get side airbags, literally normal side airbags for the passengers of the rear seats, which is very, very rare and very few cars can have that. Now the S-Class does. Good job. Audio with beautiful speakers is really good and there is no disappointment here. Mercedes say that this design 
is clean. I would say that it might be a little bit less exciting than the outgoing model. And also another thing is that something definitely happened here in the back. What I can tell you is that in real, it looks, it really looks much better than in the photos. So that's good news. And this one with the black exterior paint, lots of chrome around. This is an AMG pack also. It's worth noting that. And with those 20 inch rims, it looks, it looks really good. I would say it looks good. I wasn't very convinced coming here and seeing it in the photos. It, it looked weird, especially here from the back. But now, now I do like it more. So I think you guys, once you see it um, in real, you will be okay if you already are not. <laughs> These handles that pop out of the body are really cool. However, only if you know how to use them. At the beginning, I sure didn't. And here you have to either press a button on a key, approach the car with a key. However, if the car is locked and you're approaching it, it should automatically pop out those handles. And the soft close camera system can be here and it's basically for you use instead of playing a video game at home. GTA baby. A weird thing, if you notice, there is a tripod here. And I am pretty sure that this tripod in real life is not exactly coming from the butt of the S-Class. Weird. We've got here electric seats, moving forward, reclining, everything electric. And I can also move the seat of the passenger in front of me. Take a look at that. That gives you full power and it's worth noting that you cannot do that sitting on the other side because there you don't have the possibility to move the driver's seat. Well, I would say that's kind of reasonable. Head-up display is very big and incredibly sharp. You may modify it too if you'd like to change the way it looks. It is included in the themes that you may choose from. And also during rainy or foggy weather, it will highlight the car in front of you with the light on the windscreen so that you can be sure where that car is to follow it even more safely. This is incredible and this is to the point when I agree that this is the number one car today in terms of available technology. I believe it, it really is. Seat controls are here on the doors and the thing is that you don't really push them, you just kind of touch and then uh, add pressure. The thing is that sometimes it's it really requires a lot of force. I'm not sure if it exactly knows what I'm trying to do. So sometimes it requires a little bit of force to, yeah, like this one, to have it moving. And some functions you can only adjust by going here, a comfort, um, a seat, and here you have your lumbar support, which is awesome. One thing that's so crazy is that with those settings here on the screen, the lumbar support and the shoulders, side bolsters, they react immediately. Oh, it disappeared now. So anyway, my point is that this is, this is a nice thing to touch here. It's working differently, so you have to know that. I would actually prefer to have all the adjustments in one place. There's ventilation, there is massage, and 10 different modes of it, and it works on your butt too. I really like these seats and I'm impressed. And I call myself a seat expert. I actually run a business that's called Power Seats, where I build and sell office chairs made out of car seats like these. So far, the main product has been BMW 7 Series seats uh, turned into office chairs, electrically adjustable. Perhaps I should also add these from an S-Class to the regular product line. I'll link it for you guys in the description so that you can see by yourselves what I'm talking about, but it's fun. One more thing to mention here, you can have a butt massage and I'm having it right now. Also, you may have a heated steering wheel, but that's not all because you may also melt your elbows because the center armrest and the side armrest on the doors can be heated here. And this 3D display is just crazy. It's making me dizzy. I love it. <laughs> now my favorite test, the test of an automatic electric tailgate. Actually, you know, guys, I, I did test that and I know that this one works at 100%. Every time I did it like 15 times taking my stuff from the boot and put it, putting it back inside and it worked all the time. Look at this, like boom. You can't stop it, it's just so reliable. So it does work, good job. A sunshade challenge and it's annoying since they put this, ah, again, like in the CLA, they make it very, very steady and it doesn't slide. Look, I can have sun here. 
It can blind me. This one is a fail then. But I know that there is an upgrade in Mercedes cars, which um, thanks to one of you I did learn. And it's that you may have two sun shades. One can stay here while the other one is here. I just still don't know if it can actually slide. So if any of you knows that, please let me know. No! Fail! Jesus Christ, look. Look what I did. I, I feel so ashamed. I did that all by myself. Yeah, that's me. Now the door been tested. Let's see what we have here. And there is something soft. It's, it's, it's the same kind of material that you have here, which is soft. However, it still generates some sounds. I wonder, I wonder what it would be like if we really put something there. I am not sure. This is risky. This is somewhere there. It, I'm, I'm not giving it a full score for this. I'm sorry, I, I think I would prefer a carpet. Now the handles test and there's good news because there are handles and every single person in the car, every passenger, has a handle. So thank you to my colleagues at MB Motors Mercedes-Benz showroom here in Warsaw. Actually, it's in a city called Piasecno, which is kind of connected to Warsaw, the capital city. So if you are located in Warsaw, go ahead and treat yourself with this luxury. Come touch it, speak to it, talk with MBUX in this new S-Class because there's definitely a lot to experience here. In the end of the day, this new S-Class feels very luxurious, very comfortable and very upscale. The whole pack of technology is insane. It's, it's really amazing and I do like the materials inside. It is an S-Class and it does live up to its name. Then the design part I'm leaving to you guys because this is a very individual thing and everybody has to judge by themselves. It really does feel expensive so you know what you're paying for. So if you like this one please check my other videos and see you in the next one. Stop clicking! You! Hey Mercedes! How can I help? Stop clicking! I'm sorry. Can you say that again? Yes, freaking stop clicking. You're clicking all the time. Why? Stop it. I'm sorry, but I can't help you with it right now.